Yo, yo, welcome back to the Audio Theory Podcast. If you're new to the channel, please hit the like button as well as the subscribe button. What's good, Danny? How have you been? I've been good, dude. Happy uh, MLK Day. Um, Great day. Obviously, rest in peace to the king. Um, But yeah, man, feeling good. Had a obviously long weekend. Can't get mad at that. Uh, Enjoying the cooler weather down here in South Florida. I know a lot of places are freezing. Is it cold by you? Yeah, it's it's super cold. I was just looking at coats because I, I have <laughs> coats already, but now I'm like I gotta weave it into like my fashion at this point because it's cold every single day, like 40 degrees, which is pretty unusual for California, at least to be consistent like that every single day. Sure. Okay. So like, what is it normally this time of the year for you? Um. Well, in this particular part of the south bay i'm not too sure to be honest because uh, okay this is my first winter in this area but i would say it probably should be more like in the 60s low 60s like yeah yeah low 60s obviously not like uh not spring weather but not really running to buy a coat yeah right got it got it got it dude well i just know on the on the for genus by my fiance's family bro it's snowing and it like in dallas texas and like that's wow. not a thing yeah period right like it's just not like so it's cool because like not all her friends have kids and they're seeing their first snow ever but it's like what is happening (laughs) like like, what's wrong with the world that it's fucking snowing in dallas texas like yeah yeah yeah. something something's up bro something's definitely up because shit just shit just feels weird i'm I'm sure people say this shit like every five years but it's like the hottest or coldest day ever but it just seems odd recently that we're having these like historic i think i mentioned the pod before like you know like on uh your Microsoft Outlook or whatever, like your computer has like how hot or cold it is. Bro, every day mm-hmm. in the summer for me in South Florida, this shit said record setting heat today. And I'm just like, bro, it can't be, <laughs> it can't be a record every day. So right. um, so yeah, that's what we're, we're dealing with here. But how about, how was your weekend, bro? How was your long weekend treating you? Long weekend has been pretty good. Uh, the wifey and I went to, to Monterey, uh, which is, it's kind of like a beach town and it's supposed to be an hour south but it took us two hours because we left on friday crazy traffic um it was nice i would say we we are a little bored at times just because there's not a, a ton to do in that area um super super white area not that that makes it bad or anything Dude, just... okay, okay. So, this is gonna, so i don't know <laughs> if you've ever seen the show but i i believe that show is where they filmed or the show is based off uh pretty little liars on hbo I'm familiar with the name of the show. I haven't seen the actual show, though. Okay, but it's based in Monterey. Like it's mm-hmm. it's because it, Monterey is not too far from you, right? Right, right, correct. Yes, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure. It's, yeah, like I'm. Yeah, so like the show gives off like a very rich housewife, like mm-hmm. super um, techie or finance husband who's just gazillionaire, massive yeah. house on the beach, and yeah. then like. Everyone goes to the same coffee shop. There's like two mm-hmm. restaurants that everyone ends up passing each other. Yeah. So like the show gave off boring. Hence, like their lives yeah. were exciting when anything small happened. So I yeah. can see that. But like what you guys, I mean, you went to like what a vineyard though, right? When you were there or like a, a wine uh, tasting place? Yeah, we went to like a wine tasting uh, spot. I, I guess it is a vineyard, um, but it it was more like a restaurant Um it had more of a restaurant like brunch spot feel for some yeah. reason like there was like five families there and they all had their toddlers running around playing with their legos and shit and i was just wondering we were trying to figure out like is this what like the most fun parents can have or something because everyone brought their toddlers and i guess it was more of a t- it's more of a tame way for parents to drink um but it, it was nice to, to you know sit sit there and sip wine and everything yeah something different yeah yeah something different um we went to an aquarium on the our last day on the way back which was nice as well i think for us we just realized that sort of uh we didn't need two nights one um to be there mm. and two uh it, it just felt like somewhere you'd want to kick it if you were retired and like just wanted yeah absolutely nothing to do other than sip wine and you know smell the fresh air uh, yeah which, which, which is tough though yeah. i think when you're coming off like uh when you're our age it's like there's still this innate thing like if i have the day off and i'm on vacation we should be getting day drunk and like bar hopping and like try and it's right. like 
you can't do that everywhere. You know what I mean? Right. Like you can't, especially when it's like only one or two spots to even see in the entire small town you're in. So mm -hmm. no, I, I feel that. I feel that. Um, and then, yeah, one day is probably enough. Yeah, one day is enough. We were one thing we were trying to do was use the amenities, which was the the hot tub, which was on the roof, had a nice view of the beach. But when we went, there was two, and I think it's really meant for like six people, and each hot tub mm -hmm. had like four people in it. So I was like, I'm not trying to be in the hot tub with a bunch of people and like feel forced to talk to them and shit. So I we ended up just staying in our room and we're like, we'll just use ours like tomorrow. And yeah, we'll just go home. <laughs> yeah, we'll just go home. So yeah, I, it was like, it was mediocre overall, uh, which isn't yeah, bad. Yeah, like, yeah. Not every trip can be a 10 out of 10. Uh, like Columbia, just, but yeah, you just yeah, you just realize that over time. But question for you though, because I think this is like uh, I think you posted or she posted it. It's your 12 year anniversary. So when you guys get married, how does this work? Like, like do you keep the dating anniversary? Do you keep the yeah. anniversary where you were legally married? Like, how does this work? It's funny you ask. It's still confusing, I think, to both of us. But... <laughs> I'm so we have like the... I want to know. I want to know what dates can I forget about completely or have to like remember for right. the rest of my life. So we have our our like dating anniversary, which was when we became official or whatever. Um, and then we have our the date we officially got married, and then we have the wedding date. Obviously, we dated far longer than we've been married, so we have always celebrated the dating one, but it gets more confusing because technically we became official on Valentine's day, but we felt like if we were to do that, it wouldn't be as special and it would be hard to celebrate because everybody's fucking celebrating Everyone Valentine's about, day. So yeah. we just made it a month earlier, which is like when we started kind of hanging out or whatever. So got it. January 14th, I guess is the official one. Uh, but then it became tricky because we started doing dry January, but we wanted to celebrate. And so that <laughs> made everything 10 times more complicated than it needed to be. You guys did drink this trip though, right? Yeah, we drank, but it was, it was all bad. Like I got a headache after like one drink, my body mm. was like, you're not supposed to be doing this. And then I yeah. think it worked in my advantage because I wasn't like really, I, right now I don't have the craving to drink just because I felt like shit. I was tired. Yeah. So. But yeah, we did drink. Got it. Got it. And then what about the um, the day you get married and then the day you officially got married, like by the courts? Like you obviously do the wedding day as opposed to just like the legal documentation day, right? Um, no, we don't. We haven't celebrated either of those days as like a separate thing. Okay. Okay. So for you guys, it's whatever your your anniversary for you guys will forever be like your dating anniversary. Yep. Correct. Got it. Got it, got it. Well, yeah, I mean, I feel like that that probably makes more sense for your like your dynamic because that's so much longer, right? Like right. most people don't date for as long yeah. as you and like the wife you dated, right? So that's why right. uh, but then for marriage, you know, 10 years from now, true, God willing, then it, for us it would be like, okay, now the marriage date is like more important because we've reached that milestone. Whereas like one year like of marriage is a 20 really year like, anniversary of dating. And it's yeah. like, yeah, which would you choose? Kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Yeah. That is, that's a good point. Who knows? Maybe we'll just celebrate it all and, and have a reason to, to get faded. Yeah. Yeah. Facts. Dude. No, no, I was just wondering that. Cause like, yeah, we're like, ours is quickly approaching and I'm like, so do we move on from like February to April now as a new thing? But, um, mm -hmm. it's all good. We actually did a whole bunch of stuff for the wedding. Uh, today, actually we booked our, the hotel, little shit here and there. So we're trying to like knock out two or three things like every single weekend. So it doesn't mm -hmm. like mount it into like, uh, we just booked our flights. So nice. yeah, man, it's all, it's all coming together, dude. But uh, let's get into it. Episode 164, episode 163, 2024 equals 21 is up everywhere. But uh, my guy, I think we need to start where we ended last week's episode. We were confused about a 21 Savage album slash movie dropping. It's we confirmed it's just the movie. It was just the album, sorry, dropping. Uh, and what an album it was. So 21 Savage, the American, was it the American Dream, right? Is that what yeah, the Amer uh, American, American Dream. With American Nike. Dream. Yep. So your thoughts on your first couple run throughs of listening to the album. For me, I think what really stood out was the production. Um, I don't think lyrically 21 necessarily did anything brand new. Uh, to mm -hmm. be honest, it was very much the same 
that he's always been rapping about. Uh, but for me, the production was was just amazing. Metro Boomin, I think, executed it perfectly. Uh, yeah. I think some people don't like the overuse of sampling or whatever, but uh, in actuality, I think we kind of don't have enough good sampling nowadays. And I think right. to kind of really echo well. your point from like last week, you were trying to, you, I think you mm -hmm. said like, uh, you want to see the sampling, sampling stop. Yeah, lazy sampling yeah. stop. And I feel like this is like the, this is in the Kanye realm of, this is quality sampling. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and 21, somehow, despite his like dark, kind of monotone flow, works really well on those soulful beats, uh, especially like Red Rum and stuff. Um, and yeah, overall, I thought it was a great project. Uh, I personally have a lot of replays from that album. Um, I think 21 proves that he is here to stay and it was pretty much exactly what i expected um and i'm glad it as a surprise drop it delivered and um for me it was a, a good start to the year good start to the year no snippets to kind of get us too excited right and just like the shock mm -hmm. drop of it all was right. great um yeah man for me i would say specifically so i didn't get a chance to listen to the album till sunday and i don't know if that was a gift or a curse but like Obviously, you had the advantage of being on the West Coast. So you heard it before most people did. Uh, my boys, my cousin hit me up Friday. Like, yo, have you heard it yet? And I'm like, damn, bro, these motherfuckers are getting me too hyped for this shit. Like, <laughs> it's not going to be able to live up to what I would try and listen to. But dude, I would say my biggest takeaway similar to you was the production fall, right? Because it felt like elevated and like this is a different almost like when you hear like jay-z right like this is a different level of quality of music that you're taking in right now right this is not some regular schmegler hip-hop album that drop you know consume it and move on right this feels like one like the instrumentals would be worthy of you listening to multiple times let alone a quality rapper like 21 savage spitting bars on it right so that was my biggest thing my only pushback on a lot of people, that's what I saw online as well as far as the initial impact, was like, I think people were overhyping the content of this, mm -hmm. right? Like they were trying to say that like, you know, he's, he's uh, this is the first time that he's giving us like hip hop with a message. And I'm like, yeah. I don't really hear that though. Like, right, I get this. There were certain songs about, you know, him talking about like, you know, leaving the lifestyle and moving on to, you know, the industry, but like, bro, in weird way, like it wasn't so deep that like it made me like oh wow bro like can you hear what he's saying i feel like he's been saying this stuff for a while now right maybe we didn't hear it her loss where i think a lot of people truly listened to him for the first time but like previous albums i think he was talking about the same shit like hey i'm bigger than the street stuff right so mm -hmm. i would say i pushed back on the the overwhelming uh feedback i saw there online on IG on YouTube where it's like, oh, dude, these are the these are bars we've never heard from Twenty One Savage. Like he elevated his bars to a certain level. I push back on that. I think this is a great album, especially for Twenty One Savage, right? Because at some point, I think I said two weeks ago, like, bro, how can he? Like, I'm over. Like, take a break. You know what I mean? So for him to come back with a, bro. By the way, to your point, uh, last week that you were over all these albums with so many tracks, dude. Fifteen tracks, concise. The entire album's only fifty mm -hmm. minutes. Bro, like that's bro, that's like perfection. Yeah. Like all my runs, I was like shocked it was already over, bro. I was like, oh, the intro again. So good for him for giving us a concise body of work. But I would say that my biggest takeaway from this is just the quality of production, as opposed to I'm blown blown away with like the shit he's saying. Yeah, no, 100% agree. It, it, I don't sense any growth in like the content. I don't think he got like that much more introspective or anything. Um, no, right? Yeah. I thought it was funny too. I mean, I'm sure you heard the line when he's like, uh, he's like, smell, uh, you can smell gas or something. It smells like somebody pooped. Yeah. That Young yeah, Thug yeah. song. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I had to rewind it. I'm like, there's no way he, he actually said, okay, yeah, we're going to release this, this bar. <laughs> uh, but, but it felt very couple, cinematic. It felt cinematic, dude. And mm -hmm. it felt, um yeah he was clever like shit that i would always look for so as far as like i don't think he regressed right like i don't think this was like it, is, it didn't feel like a forced album because you're coming out with this movie and we have to put something out it felt like hey this is a good body of work right because i think like sometimes we think these guys have to take massive leaps every album every project i think this one was just 
consistent. Like, bro, he's become over the last three or four years, someone when they drop, you want to go listen to. And I right. think this is a similar situation where you went, you went into it. It was very good. The, produ uh, the production quality of the overall album has increased, but he's consistent. And dude, that can hit him being consistent is a very good body of work. So yeah, I have, I have no pushbacks or, you know, any, um, any disagreements with the quality of this, this album though. But I felt like there were a couple like uh, funny one-liners that he probably added more to the dude. The one about like, um, <clears throat> she can tell I'm leaving before I came. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, I was like, yeah. my guy. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. my, my. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he's... Uh, that one I was like, yeah, well done, sir. Yeah, yeah. No, he he's definitely clever. Um, I think he may not get enough credit because he's, he's almost too like nonchalant about the rapping yeah. like he's just kind of just speaking like yes it sounds like he's leaving a voicemail half the time yes yes um, which i which is he, why i appreciate he knows that though and i think that's why he mm -hmm. adds more ad libs than normal to kind right. of give it a break because if it was just him rapping 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 then it's like bro right. you're just you're leaving like you said like leaving a voicemail is a great analogy because right. it's just like it's so monotone that you have to add ad libs to like break it up which is why the live shows are abysmal but <laughs> but listening to it in the car or in any other environment, it's A1, in my opinion. Um, what I so my other likes of the album, it didn't feel like an Avengers album, right? Like I think like it there, obviously there were features, right? But it felt like mm -hmm. it kind of made sense at the time. Yep. Um, I also like that there wasn't a Drake feature. It's like, bro, like we got enough of that, right? Over the yeah. last year and a half, we've gotten enough Drake 21 Savage tracks. We don't need another one. Right, we so got I enough Drake. It. Period. Correct, but them to you know what I'm talking about, but them yeah, together, yeah, yeah. right? Because <laughs> we had the Jimmy Cooks, we had Knife Talk before the album, then we got a full album, then we got two more features on Drake's album. You're like, bro, mm -hmm. like, at some point, guys, like, stop hanging out. So I appreciate that there was no Drake feature, um, and then there was another like couple things that I truly enjoyed. Um, oh, bro, so like I, so Blair and I spoke offline. I have to guess what your favorite song is, right? But I will say I did appreciate the intro because the intro reminded me of your song, It's Gonna Be All Right, uh, like with the mom and like the my mom. Like, because I feel like those things might as well have been the same thing. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like what every mom wishes for their child. So I, as far as an overlap, I saw that was a clear overlap of like your song. Yeah, I was actually thinking that about uh, the song Darker Day is towards the towards the end. Because I think the mom comes back in. Mm -hmm. I forget exactly what she says, but she's talking about like him achieving his dreams or whatever. And uh, un or what's uncanny is that your mom left a very similar uh, voicemail to you, the one Correct. that you post on your profile. Correct. Um, Correct. I thought that was uh, a good one. But as far as trying to think which one you like the most, um, was the one with Doja Cat? No, I did love that one. Um, it's tough because I've literally one, two, three, four, five. I have like nine ads to my playlist from that. Oh, album. sick. Right. So pretty much the whole album, bro. Let <laughs> me just, just say the album. <laughs> but I do. So what was the favorite track then from the uh from the from the project? If I have to go off replays, it, probably Red Rum. I, I think mm. that beat's just out of control. But I think intro, I will bro. get Oh, the like intro the, too. Yeah, the yeah, intro yeah. to well, no, sorry, the intro to Red Rum, like the way they mm -hmm. just give you the beat yeah. sampling, and like, and then it mm -hmm. like develops, like it's almost like you're seeing Metro Boom and create the beat for you, and then obviously yeah. Twenty One Savage goes off with like the quality of the of the song. Yeah, no, I'm a sucker for um, obscure samples where you like have no idea who the original is. Correct. Um, what, which is like to our point from uh, not to bring it back to previous episode, but which is why I think we hate current sampling because we know where you're getting this from, right? Like, yeah, like yo, find some obscure fucking random ass Brazilian song I've never heard from and sample that, bro. <laughs> but don't sample the hit that I heard ten years right, ago. Like, exactly. That's not creative, bro. Yeah, no, not creative at all. But Metro Boomin did his thing. And speaking of sampling, I think a close second might be. Shit, it's a, a tough one, but maybe should have wore a bonnet. I just love that one. Um, it has that, like, a good one. that 90s. Uh, uh, I, for me, at least, it's kind of obscure. But I think it was nice to just get a break from all the the 
bloodshed and, and murder lyrics and just have <laughs> yeah, him yeah. talk about something a little more wholesome for four minutes. Yeah, I like the Burner Boy one, Just Like Me. That was a good one. Bro, where... I, I don't want to play this song and this shit gets, like, deactivated. But there was one... Dude, the song that he's, like... the one, It's an example of, like, where he's rapping, but he's adding an ad-lib after, like, every couple bars. Oh, so, like, the one where it's, like, mm, or whatever. Or, mm-hmm, or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that's... um, I don't think it's led to my brother, but... I, I think, think it's... it's uh. Is it see no, the real? Sneaky. No, I think it might be. Uh, it might be sneaky or letter to my brother. No. Damn, I should have saved that shit. Well, I added point. all these damn songs, and I know it's not any of the ones I added. Uh, damn, which one is it? Yeah, no, bro. And I want to play this shit. So, like, hold on. I, mean, I could probably mute myself, right? And then, like, yeah. Oh no, it is sneaky. It is sneaky, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so mm-hmm. sneaky. Sneaky is a good one, bro, because sneaky, I feel, is everything you love about 21 Savage that, and it also makes you understand how someone of that flow type, that monotone is so successful, right? Because they find ways with their voice to still be like instrumental and like in the way they deliver music, right? Like, again, like, yeah. if you just saw this guy rapping on a corner, you'd be like, oh, you're, you're not going to make it, you know? <laughs> but, like, the way he's able to get creative on turn beats, it's like, oh, bro, this makes complete sense, right? Like, yeah, yeah. like I think about, like, um, that banger he had back in the day, bro. Like, uh, I got a one, two, three, four, mm-hmm. you know, like, like, shit like that. He's just able to make creative, but, like, on the surface, is like, bro, there's nothing here. So I think right. Sneaky's a great example of his, like, of his flow being... Not underrated, but like he maximizes every in- inch of talent that he has. A hundred percent. Pause. Yeah. Pause. <laughs> like you can't even say inches anymore. You can't say anything. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we had a great American Dream Twenty One Savage. What's the uh, what's the grade out of ten? Out of ten, uh, I give it a cool eight point five. 8.5. I'm 8.3. Giving, I like 8.3. 8.3. I'm going to go 8. I'm going to go 8. I feel like I feel like anything above an 8, anything above an 8.5, now we're talking of like different air of like albums. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I feel like, again, for me personally, I think you as well. I think we've listened to so much 21 Savage recently that I think we already appreciate, appreciated him to a certain level. So like, I don't think I was surprised. Whereas I think a lot of people who are in love with this album are like shocked by how good it is. And I'm like, mm-hmm. if you've been listening to him for the last like two or three years, you kind of seen this happening for a while. Right. I think they're, they're probably yeah. more impressed with the, the production because he's been doing this forever. But the production yeah. just blew me out of the water. Yeah. And again, to your point though, man, like a, a concise album, bro. Like that, that's full circle. Song one literally leads into song 15. It makes sense. It's not too much. So, um, yeah, shout out, shout out to 21 Savage, uh, Metro Movie Production. Really good job. American Dream, if you have it, go we'll peep that. Um, we had other drops, though. We got the Insano album from Kid Cudi. Um, I thought for a moment it was going to be a Gangsta Grills um, mixtape because of the DJ mm-hmm. drama, but that was only a couple of times. So, yeah. but yeah, your thoughts on, uh, on Insano? My expectations were so low for this. So um, low, bro. I didn't like that the singles that were dropped, or I didn't. I didn't necessarily not like them, but um, I wasn't impressed by the singles that were dropped, and um, there just wasn't any real reason for me to be excited up until I listened to it. Um, but I listened to it. I actually listened to it before uh, Twenty One Savage. Oh, you uh, went to for that me, first. Yeah, I went to that first because I think. I was expecting to just skip everything and be like, nah, this shit sucks. <laughs> and then get to 21 Savage. But uh, I listened to the whole thing start to finish and I felt like I had a lot of fun and it seemed like Kid Cudi was having a lot of fun too. Um, again, I didn't walk away thinking to myself, oh, he leveled up or did anything yeah. out of out of pocket. But I walked away with a lot of fun replays. Uh, I think he stayed pretty consistent with his more modern sound um and yeah i just uh, appreciated the listen i had a good time and that's all i wanted from it and i felt like i got that so i'd had no real complaints 
Dude, agree with most of that for sure. I would say I, I walked away or ran away listening from it. Um, I heard this one on, on my run uh, yesterday. Enjoyable is my biggest takeaway. Like, this is an enjoyable body, body of work. Now, the only thing I say from Kid Cudi, right? So I would say these last, dude, it's 2024. So in the last three years, right? Because it's been three years and change he dropped Man of the Moon 3, mm -hmm. which I think you and I both agree is probably his best body of work in like close to like, what a decade bro like you know yeah. what i mean like really quality so i think that's the standard that i have for like whatever is after that project and mm -hmm. i don't think this lives up to that at all but I, i'm letting it just be two different things right like you yeah. can come out with a a classic and then also your next few albums can just be you having a good time right and i think this album is just him having a good time uh i think the production for this is way more rap than normal mm -hmm. for him which i appreciate um and i also think like dude his flow is like it's on this body of work it's almost that like gen generic sounds terrible but like think about like uh the stereotypical 2000 flow like rappers when they want to be lazy you know what i mean like just yeah, yeah. like so laid back that like yo this is easy dog like i'm not even trying yeah. that's like what i got from cutting the entire album right like mm -hmm. this is just easy dog i can do this whatever yeah. i want this is not that hard for me kind of a thing did you feel that yeah. way as well no, I definitely felt that way. Half the time, I couldn't even hear what he was saying. So yeah, it was like, like he was just like high out of his mind in the booth. Like, yeah. all right, I'll give you sixteen, no big deal. And I'm like, yeah. all right, bro, like it's good. <laughs> but like, yeah, that's like my biggest takeaway for him. Like, it wasn't again, not saying that it's uh, it was an effortless flow. Right now, was mm -hmm. it like a great album? That no, I don't think so. But it was fun, right? I'll give you a couple standouts for me that I really, really enjoyed. Um, dude, wow, track yeah, five love ASAP. ASAP love that fucking song bro really enjoyed that song and too damn high with uh yachty also mm -hmm. really enjoyed that song right but I, I i think probably wow was my favorite song on, on the album um, yeah because i feel like with wow get off me with travis too damn high with Lil yachty uh, mm -hmm. oh dude and the x and cutty with excess and Sion, like the they, mm -hmm. they sampled a song from his last album uh, before yeah. he passed like I, I'm grateful that they had those three or four bodies of work on this album because, bro, like, those guys wouldn't even exist the way they exist in hip-hop if it wasn't for Cudi, right? right? You know those guys studied Cudi, like, religiously before they popped on the scene. So it's just cool to kind of have that back and forth with, like, like, you know, your idol doesn't have to be your rival, you know, not to be corny. But, like, you can also just be on a track with them and it's, like, a cool, like, you know, passing baton moment. So I, it was cool to see those three or four artists on the uh, on the album. But yeah, like Wow was my my favorite song by by Mile. Yeah, I would have to agree. Uh, the funny thing is, I think I heard Wow when it was um, released on like the M New Music Friday or whatever. Uh, oh, prior really? to listening to that album, and I didn't. Oh, I didn't even. I didn't. I did. I did my best to not listen to anything before the album dropped. Yeah, well, I think because my expectations were so low for everything, I was like, "What? What's the big deal? I'm probably this is probably gonna be the one song I like, anyways, kind of thing." Um, but yeah, after listening to it on this road trip, like, wow, it was amazing. ASAP uh, sounds like he hasn't skipped a beat, um, and it is just a really dope, a dope and well executed song. I like "Get Off Me" by Travis, especially the intro, how it like builds up mm -hmm. and. DJ, uh, DJ Drama's talking and, and hyping up the audience. Uh, but I also like the the super kind of fun, just lighthearted stuff like Funky Wizard Smoke. Um, mm -hmm. And that's kind of where Kid Cudi generally excels and just appeals to that, that stoner audience who just wants some funky shit to listen to. So it was nice to have this balance of music because... Um, the, the kill 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 stuff after a certain right. amount of time you're just like I, can someone just smile for fucking 10 minutes and talk about <laughs> something else <laughs> i will say the song i didn't need was the pharrell williams song there's probably like three other songs that i need yeah it was all but right like yeah that was like, kind of weird this is my yeah, like just not needed you yeah, know like needed. yeah like again like i get it bro like you're at it we can say whatever we want about like I, I I think we said on this pod for like the last three or four months like he's in a very weird pocket recently right Cuddy being Cuddy like from the dress on SNL to just the shit the rants he's been putting out on, on Instagram and Twitter you're like 
is he good, bro? <laughs> like, are we like, are we like, but so again, he can do whatever the fuck he wants, but um, yeah, dude, I would say there's like three or four songs this album that I'd be like, whatever. You know what I mean? Like I, I didn't skip it because it was like my first couple go rounds, but I think next listen, probably I would be skipping two or three songs. Or mm-hmm. again, if I had to do what you do as far as like picking the ones to add, like I would probably out of the 21 songs, eight songs i've actually enjoyed enjoyed and the rest are like short you know what i mean not bad but like nothing special you know what i mean like i think this mm-hmm. is like i feel like the audio if we had to give like a summary of what audio theory thinks of his body of work it's more like we're impressed it didn't suck as opposed to like oh wow this you need to go listen to this album right now right and that's what's i would say my my the number of songs i pulled out was pretty much in line with yours um and i like i can't recall yeah seven or eight and i can't recall the last time i've done that with many albums um and yeah, which is sad album. because a lot of albums are like 25 songs so if you can't pull what eight is not even half of a 25 song album then that means in my opinion the album is not that great but right. uh pulling eight songs out of the album for me means uh, i i enjoyed myself Correct. And again, fun, bro. Like, I, this is a people over. It could be like an extended playlist in the background, or if you want to get really high, like in your backyard or a hot tub, like it's also good. Like, yeah, like I think I walked away. Wow, that was better than I thought it would be. But it was also fun. Listen, right? Like, I mm-hmm. think like you can go over, like you can repeat a couple of songs a few times over and like really enjoy that. So yeah, man. Yeah. Shout out to Cuddy again. I think we we said that he's been weird recently, but he's always gonna be someone we hold in a and upper echelons to us. So if you had to give Insano a rating out of 10, what are you giving it? Uh, I'll give it a solid eight. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I'll go with uh, 7.2. 7.2? Yes. Nice. Just again, enjoyed it. Um, not running to listen to it. I may not recommend it to a lot of people, but uh, definitely good enough, especially if you're like a, a true Cuddy fan. Like, bro, if you're getting decent quality Cuddy music, like that's a win for all involved. So, yeah. all right, man, let's go with that. Um, I guess the other biggest thing is Lil Nas X released a new single as well as video for Jay Christ. I think it's called? Yeah, Jay Christ. Yep. Jay Christ. So give the people more of an introduction of how that video portrays him and what it's portraying. Uh, so Lil Nas X in the video, um, I would say as a whole, I mean, he portrays himself as Jesus. You mm-hmm. know, he's, you know, crossing up uh, Satan and doing, you know, his provocative um dance like i guess with some some angels or his disciples or something along those lines um i would say that's pretty much the gist of it i mean he's on the cross as well he's basically just portraying himself as, as jesus throughout jesus and like other parts of the bible like i think that one yeah, he's like right. noah uh, one he's moses with like the parting of the sea so mm-hmm. yeah just like a lot of bible christianity references as little nas X. right uh I, I, I wouldn't say there was anything, you know, blatantly blasphemous or, you know, super, super out of pocket other than the fact that he's gay and kind of wearing like skimpy-ish yeah. uh, outfits. Um, but in terms of the, the music itself, I don't think it really made many references to like the visuals weren't in line with with right. uh, the, the lyricism itself. Yeah. Uh, the song is catchy. It, it's not something I would listen to really, but you know, you could bop your head to it. It's like a dope beep and everything. I think his Production music in life. general is just very pop generic. Um, mm-hmm. And he, at this point, it, it seems like just rage bait at this point. Uh, not really, I, like I'm not even buying into the fact that he's actually, you know, Illuminati prop or satanist yeah, or anything yeah. like that he just wants to piss off the old uh christians you know in middle america who don't know any better and are just looking for things to be pissed at yeah so i would say like this what came across to me is like to your point like none of the lyrics are really about the video visuals right mm-hmm. so then like then you're just going through your normal 
rollout of what can I do to generate controversy and people to check this video off, right? So right. like, it seemed lazy to me, right? That's like, mm -hmm. that was my biggest takeaway of Jay Christ, the uh, the video by Lil Nas X. Um, there was even one visual where like, they go from heaven to hell, and it's almost like down like a stripper pole, which mm -hmm. he also did in that other video. I think, um, what was the name of that song, bro? Um, you know what I'm talking about though, like- Yeah, yeah, I know what album. you're talking about. Uh, was it oh, not opium? The fuck the same. It was like uh, whatever the phrase was, but like yeah, like it was very Montero. Similar. It was like a Montero, bro. Yeah, Montero. Mm -hmm. Like this almost like a like, part two of Montero, right? Mm -hmm. So it just this video felt like again. I wasn't even shocked by it because I'm like, yo, this is just what he's gonna do now. Every album rollout, there's gonna be one Christian reference video where he's doing a bunch of wild shit. Uh, the music is whatever to me, right? Like I've never been a fan of Lil Nas X, so I'm not saying the music is bad, but like I'm not bumping it, right? Like I'm not in the fucking gym going wild to uh, industry plant, even though we both agree it's a good song. So yeah, dude, it's like, honestly, like it's almost like it's bored, it's lazy to me. Like this, like I think he expects, it's almost like um, towards the end of like uh, Prime Eminem, right? Like it was the same exact, formula hey let's you know let's diss everyone in pop culture and make a video of like them in the video it almost feels like that with Lil Nas X but it's like bro we also don't respect you as a rapper or like we don't really know where to categorize you man so it's like you want to do this every time do it you know what I mean but I don't whereas I think the Montero one uh generated way more attention I don't see this one generating the attention that Jay uh that the other one get because it's just like bro like it's just like okay dude we, we this is just what you do now and it's like it is what it is like who cares yeah I mean I, I definitely have seen like Christian channels um like YouTube channels talk about it as I was just browsing on YouTube and people like uh, within the rap community especially who are I, I guess skew more homophobic of course are gonna play the the religious card I think what's sure. his name Kai Sanat, Sanat, however you pronounce it, uh, is basically saying we should cancel Lil Nas. Like he went too far. Oh, he said that? Yeah. And I, I find it just super hypocritical how we can listen to, again, not to sound like an old head, but like murder music and all this other stuff. And that's just, you know, completely normalized. We're desensitized to it. But like, God forbid you, literally, God forbid, you throw like an upside down cross, have it flash across the screen or some shit. Everyone's up in arms. Oh my God, like, you know, please, please, you know, pray for your sins and all this other shit. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know, it's funny to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's uh, hypocritical for sure. But yeah, again, the song didn't do anything for me, bro. Like, I don't know if I've ever been moved by a Nas X song in the past. No. Um, and then, dude, I mean, I think, first of all, I appreciate the, um, the uh, progressiveness of his approach though, right? In the sense like, bro, you want to be a young 20 year old jacked looking human being in like a skirt and doing choreography dance, good for you, bro. Like good for you. There may be an audience for that and I'm not the audience, right? But I appreciate the progressiveness because bro, 15 years ago, that would never exist, bro. You would mm -hmm. never see someone slightly rapping dude in a skirt with eight other guys half naked or behind him right that would never yeah. happen so kudos to him for being progressive in that sense but again you could be progressive but also i think just be lazy in your approach and that's what i think about this video i'm like bro like this was not shocking at all to me i'm like cool that's what he's gonna do every time now and it is what it is right like some people might call it blasphemous for even having some of those visuals but i think for him it's just going to be the norm now right whatever he can do to kind of muster up some kind of controversy so i know right. for me i wasn't i wasn't moved either way the song's not being added to my playlist you know like it's just like cool bro good for you, you have an album coming out um again i don't even know how dude honestly bro like it's so weird because the streaming numbers but bro like i heard he's not even fucking selling out arenas like i don't like i don't even know how good of an artist he is doing like financially you know what i mean mm -hmm. like like that's like the the weird part. It's like, is this like an industry thing where they feel like they need to put him in there for like shock value, or like is he really doing well financially as an artist? Because like, I don't know. I'm man, sure I don't he's eating. To a lot. You think Off so? Off Old Town Road. Off Old Town Road for Old sure. Old Town Road. Okay. Uh, I know other songs. Be like, I picked up by like IBM as far as like commercial, you know, reruns mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But 
Yeah, like I don't ever think about Little Nas X as like a, you know, like a an artist who's like just killing it in the game and like is just you know selling out arenas, going on tours. Like I don't know, man. I feel like his his audience is still pretty niche, even though he's yeah. a massive name. Yeah, it, it seems super niche, and I don't know. It's weird because he he had Old Town Road. You could not escape that song. And then as soon as he comes out gay, it's like every song has to be like, ha ha, like yeah, I'm gay, correct. I'm wearing pink, I like correct. sucking deep shit. And I'm like, that's cool, live your truth, but does every single rollout have to be, let correct. me piss off people who hate gay people or, or homophobic? Like, show us, it's kind of like the white rapper thing. Like, Mac Miller was just a rapper. He didn't talk about how he's white every fucking song correct. or any song that I'm aware of. Right. You know, I think Lil Nas X, like, I, I don't, I'm not a part of his audience, so I don't care what he chooses to do, but I think it would be dope if he made music where he just, him being gay is, uh, just so happens to be an attribute of his. It's not like the focal point of his music. Kind of like Isaiah Rashad. Like he got- Isaiah Rashad, get, Frank Ocean, yeah, right? Frank like Ocean, Owens. all these guys. Yeah, yeah, facts, dude. Like that should be like, bro, there's like a great, there's like a great, um, I don't want to say the word because I'm not trying to get canceled here or at my job. But like uh, that Chris Rock special where he's like the difference between like a gay person and like someone uh, you call like the F word, right? Uh, it's just like, like you, you can be like, just because you're gay, we don't have to know every second of every part of your day, right? And I think that's like with like little Nas X, like bro, you can just be gay, bro. Like we're, mm -hmm. we get it. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to constantly. Yeah, man, that's like that. It's like a very fine line though, man. Like, cause I think like they like, a, gay men get offended when you say that to them sometimes though you oh like, I mean? like high like tone it down so that i feel comfortable yeah. type, type of thing correct yeah yeah. don't be it's a, like, don't be so much of a nigga like you know tone down the slang correct. and pull up your pants correct. a little bit correct yeah. correct like right that. so it's, it's it's a very fine line of like but yeah no but i feel you though bro it's like bro you can just be gay like and just like we know you're gay but like bro, like you having to be in a mini skirt every video and like, like it's almost like putting it in your face in a sense of like, ha ha ha, you know, mm -hmm. I'm gonna get rich rapping and being this like, and it's like, okay, bro, you could also not be this way. And like, we also wouldn't give a fuck. So yeah, yeah like I, I feel like his overall career, like great point, bro. Like for the moment, like Old Town Road came out to now, wild, bro. Like just like, and it just feels like so gimmicky, right? Even yeah. if this is your truth, great. But like that's what approach it is. is so gimmicky and like horny. Like it's not even that's what I'm saying. Like I wasn't even shocked. I was like, bro, what is he gonna do, bro? That, that's mm -hmm. all he does now. And now like what sucks is that all we're gonna know you as is this gimmicky artist, right? As opposed mm -hmm. to you, you are a talented musician who makes good music, right? But all I'm thinking about now is like, what's the next video gonna be like? Is he gonna be guzzling Satan's dick or something? Like that's <laughs> like, like I don't know what else to expect from your fucking videos. Yeah, no, I think you hit the nail on the head. Um, people just want authenticity. And when you feel like the you can read the script of the marketing plan before mm -hmm. like the marketing even takes place or while it's taking place, then you feel like you're being sold to and nobody with art especially wants to feel that way. It's like when you see a Cheerios commercial and it's an interracial couple and they're fucking zooming in on the the contrast of the two skin tones and shit, then you're like, all right, are you selling me cereal or do you want me to fuck the white bitch across the street? Like, which one yeah. is it? Yeah, yeah, So yeah, that's yeah. where, bro, like, it, it gets frustrating. Correct, correct, bro. 100%. There was, like, a, I don't know if it was a cereal commercial, but there was something I was watching earlier with Gina. And I was like, that was a very progressive commercial. There was not yeah. one white couple. Like, it had to be either two gay dudes or a black and Asian lady dating or, like, two Hispanic. Like, there was no white people. So I'm like, okay, yeah. bro, like, I... <laughs> I get what you're pushing on us now, but like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I think about when I think about Nas X, bro. Like, it just feels gimmicky at this point. So, do what you want to do. It's not going to move me either way. And then, as far as I don't even know if his hardcore fans actually enjoy this, right? Because, like, again, dude, again, I think his audience is very niche. So, they might be like those closeted individuals who are like, see, fuck you. We can do whatever we want and still be talented. But, like, yeah. again, I, I would think after a while, if you're a fan of a musician, you're looking for quality music. And it's just like, mm -hmm. are you really getting that, right? Like at some point, this fuck you to the industry can only last for so long. Yeah. You would think. Right. 
I mean, like, look at Six Nine. We we enjoyed it in the beginning when it, when he was pissing off every rapper right. and just the entire industry. But after a while, you're like, all right, this is old. We don't really like believe you anymore. Move on. Yeah, hundred percent, dude, hundred percent. So uh, yeah, guys, if you haven't seen it, go peep it. The video, Jay Christ. I'm sure it has a few million views already. But uh, yeah, let us know in the comments what you think. Um, before we get out of here, I do want to bring up an interview. Damn, I wish I fucking saved. Do you do you know where it was on, bro? I was watching it earlier. I, it, it's behind a Patreon. I was like, oh, uh -huh. she knows. She knew exactly what she was doing. <laughs> like putting out this clip. Uh, I, I want to say it's the rotten chair or uh, the cutting room floor. The cutting room floor. So the cutting room rotten floor. Rotten chair would be dope, though. Rotten chair. That'd be, that might be our <laughs> uh, our next uh, podcast venture. Uh, the, so what was the name of it? Cutting the cutting floor. The cutting room floor. Yep. The cutting room floor, uh, most deaf, uh, had an interview on that last week, asked multiple questions. They released a couple snippets. Dude, the shit, I don't know if you saw the clip about him talking about Palestine and like genocide. Like that was actually a very a cool glimpse into the way his brain works. And you can mm -hmm. tell like he's just not from like American, like uh, meant as far as like the way they want Americans to think he's not like that at all, which I appreciate. But nice. she asked him a question about do you consider drake pop and then there was a little bit of back and forth and he compared drake to the music you listen to at target while you're shopping right so your thoughts on just someone of that caliber considering drake just pop music i mean I, honestly i'm not surprised he didn't have to answer it for me to know that he feels that way about drake's music I think everyone respect respects the height Drake has gotten to because regardless of how you spin it, it's it's not easy by any means, especially for this long. But I think Drake considers himself pop if we look at the history of it, because I mean he made a, a music video called Pop Star, recruits one of the biggest pop stars to basically lip sync for him. He raps about competing with Taylor Swift instead of these rappers. So to me, it's like drake wants to be a pop star he's he's doing everything in his power to be the most popular person trying to get the you know recruiting these TikTok girls for his music video and making tusi slide and just being a marketing genius in in all ways shapes and form i don't think he can have his cake and eat it too and be you know considered top five by like real hip-hop heads and be fucking competing with taylor swift and doing you know sprite commercials you're saying he and cannot shit. or he can't i don't think he can have his cake and eat it too no mm. i think he either has to like be the biggest he can be and kind of be part of the establishment and all that and kind of give up the the hardcore hip-hop head uh respect or if he wants that he, he's got to be more conscious stand on something that's concrete and not just like rap about you know flings and his cars and how much better he is than other rappers because that i don't think that's where the respect really comes from so i feel like he has to pick and choose and he can't complain if if people are gonna bucket him into this pop commercial space hmm. yeah i don't think i disagree with much of that at all to be honest but i would say is there a difference between being a pop star and then making pop music though Right, because I feel like you can be like pop star in the sense that everyone knows you, right? But like, do you really think? Because like the interview alluded to most Step literally saying that it's like pop music with an edge, right? Mm -hmm. And then we've also been talking about recently, like, bro, Drake's had him very aggressive with his music, right? So like, uh -huh. do you really think that like Drake is trying to put out pop music? Or he's just trying to be the biggest artist, period, which that inevitably makes mm -hmm. you consider like a pop star. I think in Drake's head, he his definition of pop star is just like, I'm big and everyone likes me. And right. uh, it doesn't matter who you are, like, I'm going to be your favorite artist. I think when Yazin Bey and Most Def, whatever he goes by now, and all these other, you know, hip hop traditionalists, I think they're saying your shit is watered down surface level safe hip hop uh, uh adjacent shit that mm. like teenage white girls and 50 year old white men can listen to and 
not be intimidated by it. I think that's how they view it. Yeah, and dude, I mean, and I guess the question is like, is that wrong though, right? Like, are we like, cause I feel like, fuck man, I feel like the goal is to make music that everyone fucks with in a sense, right? And I feel like, is that the wrong thing to be doing? Cause again, I don't disagree with most deaf at all, like, especially like when you like put it the way you just did it, right? But I don't think when you, like when the question's directly like, is Drake pop? Right, like I don't think like to say pop and like pop music, I mm -hmm. feel like that's like a bit of a slap in the face, right? Like I agree, you can't have your cake and eat it too, right? But I feel like just like leaving it alone at that, and like yeah, it's pop music. Shit, you hear at at at, uh, at Target with a bit of an edge, like I don't know, bro. That's a bit of slap in the face, bro. Because how like regardless of what we think of him as a whole, dude, the albums we've gotten from him over the last fifteen years. I mean, dude, there's been some fucking bars there, bro. You know what I mean? Like, again, maybe it's not talking about genocide and how Palestine is being affected by all these recent things. And he's not talking about the, um, you know, the uh, prison system reforms, right? Mm -hmm. But think about a call like Do Not Disturb, where he's talking about real shit that most men go through on a day-to-day -day basis. And like, and that relates to most men that like almost like a soundtrack for them, right? So I feel like, just because you're not talking about prison reform and if you're talking about how like the struggle of being a 30 year old black man in America is, mm -hmm. I don't think that should now put you in a box where like, all right, you're a pop star, you're, you're, a, you're a pop artist, right? Because I feel like yeah. there's where there's way more life in his music than just like, oh, you know, 17 year old girls are going to love me forever. It's like, yeah, sure. Yeah. But 17 year old girls also love Tupac, right? And we're never yeah. going to say Tupac was a pop artist. But I think... For people like him, their perspective is Drake might have introspective music or bars or solid bars, but he doesn't really stand for anything that's quote unquote bigger than him or is controversial. Like, because I think, for instance, Eminem will get more respect because he was went against the grain and uh, basically challenged the industry and said, you know fuck everything and uh similar to like nwa or um what's it called public enemy and all these different groups and people who basically were like i'm making a statement and i don't care if if people you like, like it before yeah. it or you like it and then inevitably people uh, ironically like them for that and then they blew up but they only did it to like essentially give a voice to the voiceless whereas with drake even if he does talk about uh i don't know his dad or you know growing up and and not feeling a certain way about or having insecurities or whatever it like ultimately just kind of is his very niche story, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah and it doesn't help that he's from canada either and I think the tough thing is he can't like he can't change his upbringing so right like i don't ever see him being in a space where he could be like kanye and, and talk about like ronald reagan and shit like i there's just no way he can tap into it. and i think that is drake's insecurity is he, he can never really talk about that stuff and i think he's talking about the street shit now because he's hoping it it'll like give him a bit more credibility and he can like tap into a lifestyle he kind of wishes he could talk about but never really had the yeah I would opportunity say on, the, uh, to. on the deluxe though for all the dogs the scary hours i think he i think it was the uh where he alluded to the um that his his black friends keep reminding him how white his mom is right as if like mm -hmm. he never seen a picture of his mom before and i feel like i think he's alluded recently it's like not being black enough for like black america than be, not being white for like white america so i know you're yeah. talking about that before but i get, but I get what you're saying there's there's the substance right even though we i like as a drake stan think there is substance because like i can we can relate to it right like the day-to-day -day of just being a man in present day society but i get it yeah he's not talking about like we got to change border control laws because too many people are being left out from like the American dream. You know what I mean? Like something like crazy yeah, like that, yeah. right? So I get from that standpoint how a Mostef, a Talib, or 
Lupe Fiasco can look at him and just like, oh, this is a fucking pop star who wants to be liked by everyone. But I think the comment itself needs like more breaking down because I just think just calling Drake a pop star or pop yeah. is very dismissive of like what right. he's trying to, and I think has achieved as an artist period. Right. I, I wish he did elaborate a bit more on it because I think everyone gets what he's alluding to. Like, you know, obviously hearing hotline, like I'm just imagining hearing hotline yeah, yeah, yeah. looking for like a pair of socks. And yeah, like yeah. when you think of that scenario, his shit sounds corny as fuck. But like, yeah, but, like but also you could play, not cut you off, but you could also play um, um, H to the Izzo while you're fucking right. shopping at Target, yeah. right? You can play through the wire when you're fucking mm-hmm. at Starbucks, right? So like, Right. Every artist has these pop bangers that, yeah, bro, they're those you play on fucking TRL, right? But like, yeah, you you're, you're probably not gonna play Knife Talk, right, or you know mm-hmm. other songs, right? It's like, and it, it just felt too much as like you're this thing and you're only yeah. that. Where I'm like, that's kind of dismissive. Then you kind of come across as like a like an old head hater if that's truly yeah. how you feel about Drake. I think what it boils down to is they just feel like it's wasted influence. Like you have all the power in the world to to stand on something, and we've yet to hear Drake say a single thing about pretty much anything. Like not a single thing. And I could get that frustration. Um, obviously, he has a lot at risk, but it's very clear Drake doesn't want to risk that, and maybe that pisses off people like a, a Most Def or whoever else. What's almost especially because like a most death, um, that's probably all he's trying to do right now, right? Mm-hmm. Is right like, help someone stand for something, and he doesn't even care anymore about the the glorification or the money aspect of it, right? So yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that part makes more sense. But yeah, I just figured we bring that one up because I feel like that could. I mean, if anyone just saw, I mean, we saw it. We're like, I've got to talk about that because you just see that headline, and then just like a two second clip of it, you're like, bro, this guy is. You know, you can't be shitting on yeah. something like that. But um, no, nah, man. But yeah, I get I get your point. So I definitely, I, 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 I'm not saying I don't agree with you. Um, all right, man. Anything else before we get into uh, Heat of the Week? No, let's dive in. Heat of the Week, episode 164. I think I know where we're going to go with this, but I'm going to leave it up for uh, the audience to guess first. But um, what was your Heat of the Weekend, bro? Honestly, I so I'm going to, I don't want to do the obvious. I, I feel like I... <laughs> try my best during these heat of the weeks to put you or people on to someone new that isn't already like the talk of the town but 100%. in this case i'm gonna go with uh preem's new album um give him a little show him a little respect outside of um can't hang so this album is called penthouse uh it released the same day as cuddy and 21 savage and i already texted you about this but i listened to from to it from start to finish and i would say i was impressed with pretty much every single song on the album um i think the the production was amazing which is always appreciated uh the production also wasn't one-dimensional uh so it wasn't like every song sounded the same and i think he he's a nice blend between lyrical and melodic um so the bars are you know strong enough i think his his pen game is pretty strong but he also has you know pretty strong hooks uh as well and overall it was just a really good listening experience um kind of goes to show that like no matter who you're connected to you really do have to stand on your own stand on your own because i mean he's basically drake's bro and I don't even know if Drake post- posted his album. Who knows? But... He did. He did. He did. Oh, he did. Okay, good. Because yeah. I know that's he posted all I knew about Savage. it. Yeah, that's how I knew about it uh, when you brought it up. I didn't. I just didn't know it was dropping this past weekend. Okay. Well, that makes me feel better because I, I, that would have been kind of snaky I'll if slap he in posted the face. twenty-one. <laughs> not his. Um. But yeah, he, I think he's he impressed me with this one, and um, it was nice to get music from someone who wasn't constantly in the news cycle good music from someone who's not constantly in the, the news cycle yeah so for me i had when i listened to the preem album it was towards the end of my run and i was ready to call an uber and give up on life so mentally i couldn't <laughs> properly dive into it um but i will so what, was there one particular song that you want to add to the heat of the week yeah i would say luxury is luxury is okay the good one or not the good one but the one that if i was an a and r and i was like 
we need a single to blow this album up, I would say Luxury is the one. That's the one? Okay. Yeah. Well, definitely, uh, when I listen to it again, I will uh, focus on that one specifically. But no, I agree with everything you said, man. Preem. Yeah, dude, I, I feel like this is like the love and hate that a lot of like people have when it comes to the OVO brand in general, right? They, like, they wonder how like how hands-on is um, is uh, Drake, but then you see like all these individuals in their own like, and it's like, bro, these guys seem happy as shit, right? Mm -hmm. So like, how, like just because they don't get a Drake feature every couple songs, but like, again, dude, I, Party Next Door looks happy as fuck. Um, Preem looks happy as shit. Um, what's the other guy? Um, What's the what's the Jamaican rapper? Um, oh, Popcon. Popcon, happy as fuck. So it's like, I mean, dude, like we can say like, hey man, this guy's not doing much of their careers, but these guys have careers. They seem to be making money. The music comes out when they want, right? There's not this pressure like, yo, you gotta drop an album every six months. Yeah. So, and I think Preem's a good example of that, bro. Because his last album was that Jackie Chan album that also mm -hmm. had Can't Hang. Bro, that's 2018, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, this guy was given the luxury to drop an album five years later, right? With no real pressure. So again, I just think like we're, we're so, it's weird, man. Cause like some out, like some record label you're used to like, you know, fucking cranking it out nonstop. But I, I, I do appreciate what OVO is. Like what's it, um, the other band, like the, the R&B group division, bro, they seem happy as fuck. They drop whatever they want. So yeah, like shout out to uh, the way Drake is running that. Um, but for me, dude, I'm, I don't know if this is an obvious one, but again, it was, Again, I, 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 if it wasn't for you, I probably wasn't even going to listen to Insano this weekend. So, again, and WOW was the one song with ASAP that I just kept replaying over and over on that run to yeah. help me get through the last few miles. So, I would say, again, it's just like a... For the rager and all of us who listen to Cuddy at a certain time in our life, that was a great reminder of, like, man, like, yes, like, some of his shit is just, like, get high to and just vibe out to. But some could be, like... This song was more towards like the pursuit of happiness remix with Steve Aoki. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Fun. Like, this is a fun song, right? And I right. feel like too much of that, like, sometimes we get caught up in, like, you know, what are the bars and what are they trying to say? It's like, bro, I'm just trying to have fun, right? And like, every song doesn't have to be so melodic. So I appreciate Cuddy, uh, what Cuddy tried to achieve with this song. Also, I would say to our point earlier about like the laziness of that album, though. Bro, this motherfucker was giving us hymns on every other track. Like, and it's like, bro, we don't need the <laughs> hymns right now, bro. We can yeah. just like, like it's not needed, but I, I get it, bro. He's just like, bro, I'm going to give you fuckers exactly what you want. But like, we didn't need yeah. hymns on every single, every single track. Yeah. No, it's, yeah, it's funny because I, after I listened to it, I decided to look at the criticism because I didn't want to be influenced by it. And everyone's like, he's never been the strongest rapper, but this album he seemed a little lazier than usual but i think people overall thought it was at worst average yeah and i would say probably a little bit better than that right um, wow. but yeah i would say wow is definitely uh my heat of the week because again it was just like a really fun song that uh yeah yeah man like i said like eight or seven or eight of these songs you listen to over and over again for i mean dude that's what a normal album was 20 years ago so good for him yeah. for uh, putting out that, that good of a body of work but um all right, man. Episode 164 of the books. Two episodes in for the year. We're moving along. Uh, let the people know what we got going on, and let's get the fuck out of here. Yes, sir. Catch us at audio-theory.com. Uh, new episode every week on all platforms. We have the Spotify and Apple Music uh, playlist, Heat of the Week selections on there, so be sure to peep that. And if you're on YouTube, check below. Look at the, the merch that we got available, hoodies, stickers, you name it. So copy something to support. Otherwise, like, comment, subscribe. Donate, share, do what you can to support the pot. Absolutely. See you next week, my dude. Love you. Yes, sir. Peace. You too. Peace.